Praise the Lord, everybody. It's me, Jim Bean III. It is a blessing to be with you right now as we open up the Word of God together. Turn your King James Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Okay, let's break this down. Look at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Okay, those who are saved, the members of the body of Christ, we need to be strong in the Lord, not weak in the Lord, not timid in the Lord, not bashful in the Lord. We can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He has all power. He has all might. And you cannot lose on his side. Look at verse 11. Put on. That is an action thing we have to do personally. Put on, not some, but the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of of the devil I was sharing this with my children I was saying if if uh, if we went to a boxing match if we went to a boxing match if if if, if the, the match started and you're there laying down you're not standing it's a good chance you probably got knocked out okay but the verse here is telling us put on the whole armor of God why that you may be able to what stand stand not laid out not knocked out but you want to be able to stand. Stand against what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles means trickery. It means trickery. The devil always used trickery. Okay, he uses deception. He will mix the truth with the lie. Okay, so you need to know the truth. All right, let's go on to verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, you might have a person who's giving you uh, 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 a hard time or someone is coming against you or maybe an organization is coming against you but it's not the flesh and blood it's not the human being the human being is being used but it's not flesh and blood what is it but against principalities against the powers against the rulers of darkness of this world the Bible tells you, you might not like this but the Bible tells us that Satan is the small G. He is the God of this world, the small God of this world. He is ruling, he, he is causing people to follow him. He uses trickery, okay? And, it's, and he uses darkness. Darkness in the Bible always represents ignorance and it always represents sin. So the more he can get you into darkness, you will be ignorant to what's around you. You'll be ignorant with all the traps that he has set against spiritual wickedness in high places, places of authority, places of even church leadership, even moms and dads and grandparents and people who we believe would tell us the truth. They were still spiritual, spiritual wickedness. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor. The second time he uses the word, the whole armor. He uses it in verse 11. Now he uses it in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. 
goes back to my analogy. If you had a boxing match, if you're not standing, if you laid down, chances are you got knocked out and you lost. Verse 14, stand therefore, <laughs> he's driving that point home. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now you say, what is, what is the loins? What, what, what is that? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Paul is gonna give us six different pieces of armor we need to be aware of and definitely put it on. He starts off with the girdle or the belt, the belt of truth or the gird of truth. And what does that do? It protects your body, okay? It protects your body. He goes on to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. You know what righteousness is. It is God's standard of perfection. The breastplate, what does the breastplate do? It protects your heart, okay? He goes on to talk about the helmet of salvation. And I'm giving you general terms. The helmet, just like in football or construction, that helmet is going to protect your head. Most importantly, it is going to protect your mind. Too many people today are losing the mind war. He goes on to talk about the shoes of the gospel of peace. Okay, these shoes, they protect your feet or your stance for Christ. All right, then he says, above all, he says, above all, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, I wonder why he said above all. I'm assuming based on all six of these armor, this shield of faith is probably going to be the most protective for you. And so this shield of faith, it protects all of you. But look what he says here in verse 16, and I'm going kind of fast, but this is just for a, a weekly Bible study, things you can go over and, and begin to meditate and, and put these into action. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, not some, but all the fiery darts of the wicked. So this devil, if he can't just come up to you and knock you out, he will from a distance throw fiery darts. But if you have the shield of faith, the Bible says that you'll be able to quench all of those fiery darts. Back to verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, based on all six of these armor piece, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, that is the, that is the only offensive weapon that we have. It is a sword. You know what you can do with a sword. You can stab, you can cut, you can penetrate. And as a believer, it's not that we use the sword recklessly. Okay, the Bible talks about how uh, we, can, we can tell the truth in love, seasoned words, okay? Grace in our speech, uh, showing love and mercy and compassionate and having, and Paul talks about not letting love be without assimilation. But that sword is really for the enemy. When he tells you something that is a lie, you can reply with the word of God as that sword and you're cutting him. When the devil lies and say, well, you can't do this and you can't do that, you respond with the sword and say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When the devil lies and says, well, you know what you've done, God is never gonna forgive you for what you said and what you've done and how you did that. And, and you respond with the word of God and Colossians it says that he has already forgiven us, not some, but all of our trespasses. He has completely forgiven us all our sins with the S, which is plural. At the cross, every sin was accounted for. At the cross, every sin was paid for in full. That's why we study our Bible, is to learn the word of God, to learn this sword, so when the enemy comes with the lie, we can stab him back with the truth. You stab him so much to where he's gonna get away from you and all he can do is throw some fiery darts. And so after you put on the whole armor of God, he goes on to verse 18 says, praying always 
with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Prayer is still a direct link from you to God. And today, the word of God is usually God's direct link to you. As we wrap things up here, you need to know that you're more than conquerors because of Jesus Christ, because of what he accomplished on the cross, and because of the position that we now have in him, you can put on this whole armor. God has given you everything you need to stand against the devil and all of his lies. A lot of churches, they don't really talk about this spiritual warfare that when a person gets saved, that they're gonna be ready to fight. We have to know that going into this, it is going to be a fight each and every day. And God will give us, he has already given us the armor to put on. So I say as your brother in Christ, every day, put this armor on, fight the good fight of faith. Okay, I love you, keep pressing, and we are getting closer and closer to that final day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back and takes us out of this earth, out of this world, to the heavenly places. God bless you.